Welcome everyone. My name is Jamon Jordan. I am the historian for the city of Detroit. And we are here to talk about the history of Arab Americans in and around the city of Detroit as we celebrate National Arab American Heritage Month. And we celebrate uh, Arab American National Heritage Month because this was an initiative that was started by the Arab American Institute and Arab America, two nonprofit organizations began to push for a National Heritage Month. And in 2017, Congresswomen Debbie Dingell and Rashida Tlaib pushed a resolution in the United States Congress to make April uh, National Arab American Heritage Month in 2021. April being National Arab American Heritage Month was acknowledged by the President, Joseph Biden, and the State Department, as well as numerous members of Congress, and 37 governors have acknowledged April as National Arab American Heritage Month. But here in the city of Detroit, Arab American history goes back much further than 2021, or 2019, or 2017. It goes back over a century. When in the 1890s, people were fleeing Lebanon and Syria and coming to the United States. Some of those people who were coming from Lebanon and Syria were coming to the city of Detroit. And particularly the Lebanese immigrants who were coming to the city of Detroit were living in the lower east side of the city of Detroit in the community known as Black Bottom. Now, Black Bottom, as you know, will one day become a predominantly African-American community, but it wasn't always that. Before it was a predominantly African-American community, it was a community of many immigrants, German immigrants, Polish immigrants, Greek immigrants, Italian immigrants, and Lebanese and Syrian immigrants. And so as they're living in the area of Black Bottom, very close to what is now Elmwood Cemetery, they're creating a small community that community will be joined by a larger group of Lebanese and Syrian immigrants, Arab immigrants coming to the city of Detroit during the auto boom. So in 1910, Henry Ford, he opens up his Model T plant in Highland Park, and he's building Model Ts on a moving assembly line. And he has put the call out for thousands of workers. In 1914, he will offer $5 a day to all workers who come to work at the Model T plant in Highland Park. And people from all over the world will come to the city of Detroit to get jobs at the Ford Motor Company plant, including people from Syria, from Lebanon, later from Palestine, and other countries in what is now known as the Middle East. And as these Arab immigrants are coming to the city of Detroit, they're establishing their own businesses, their own restaurants, their own shops, their own stores, and a mosque the oldest mosque in the state of Michigan and one of the oldest mosques in the country was established in Highland Park, just south of the city of Detroit, right next to the Highland Park Model T plant. And that mosque, which was built in 1919, will last for a few years. And the majority of the people who are members of that mosque in the Syrian and Lebanese immigrants are living in the city of Detroit. But that won't last. There will be a restriction on immigration in the 1920s, then another restriction after World War II of immigrants coming from the Arab countries. And until that's lifted, you won't have this massive influx of more Arab immigrants. So you have a small community. But after World War II and during the Arab-Israeli War of 1948 and after, and during and after the Six-Day War of 1967, Arab immigrants are coming to the city of Detroit and the area around the city of Detroit again. And now you have, of course, you already have Lebanese and Syrian immigrants coming, but now they're gonna be joined by Palestinian immigrants, Yemeni immigrants, some Egyptian immigrants, some Libyan immigrants are coming to the city of Detroit. Many of them will live on the border between Detroit and Dearborn, on both sides of that border, on the Detroit side and on the Dearborn side. And in the 1950s, they will establish the Islamic Center of America. And that Islamic Center of America, or Islamic Center of Detroit, as it was called then, was founded in the 1950s, but they will build this building in 1963. And so the Al-Zahra Islamic Center of today was formerly the Islamic Center of Detroit. As they needed more space because more and more immigrants are coming, 
they begin to look for other places. And since there are two significant Arab American communities in East Dearborn and South Dearborn, the choice is chosen as Dearborn to build a larger Islamic center. And that larger Islamic center, which will be built, will take the place of what this used to be. This is now the Al Zara Islamic Center, but it was the Islamic Center of Detroit. The reason why Arabs are coming to the city of Detroit in large numbers after the 1920s and after World War II is, of course, the war and conflict going on in the Middle East, but also because of the auto industry. Many of them are coming to work in the jobs, first at Henry Ford's Model T plant, later at his River Rouge factory, and then the, all the other auto factories that dot in and around the city of Detroit. And so the auto business, which Detroit is known as the Motor City, is a major draw for many immigrants, including Arab immigrants, who come to the city of Detroit and the cities around the city of Detroit. Today, most people from Arab countries who have immigrated to the Detroit area don't live directly in the city of Detroit, but that is the original site. So originally they were living in the city of Detroit, in Black Bottom, in the North End, on the west side of the city of Detroit, on the border between Detroit and Dearborn. But eventually, most of them will live in cities outside of the city of Detroit, including Dearborn, which has the largest Arab American population outside of the, of the Middle East, and Hamtramck, which has a Muslim majority city council because the majority of Arab immigrants in Hamtramck are Yemeni. And so Detroit was the center, but the Detroit area now is the center of people from Yemen who come to Michigan, people from Lebanon and Syria who have been coming to the Detroit area for over a century, people from Palestine, and of course some people from Libya and Egypt, North Africa. And so as we're talking about this history, we think of the foods, we think of the stores, the restaurants, the shops that the Arab immigrant population has brought in and around the city of Detroit. All of that is connected to Detroit's unique history as being a center of auto production and the historic community known as Black Bottom. Thank you as we celebrate Arab American National Heritage Month.